Hi everyone. Welcome to uh, the hands-on SD WAN Day 2 automation use cases. Uh, my name is Joel Jos. I'm the technical solutions architect uh, and look, looking at APIs and automation uh, across the port portfolio for our partners. Welcome um, to the workshop. Yeah. So um, yeah, so we can get started. If you have any questions while I speak. Uh, you can unmute yourself and probably, you know, uh, ask me directly. And I hope we can have an interactive session where I show you the use cases. Yeah, thank you. So let me um, share my deck. All right. So um, today, what use cases are we going to talk about? So it's about uh, day two operations. And in day two operations, I mean, uh, monitoring, maintaining, and troubleshooting. So they are the uh, main components that we have in the day two operations. Right? So uh, what do these components entail? Or, or what is the um, main, main connecting thread across them? So essentially, the tech target defines a single pane of glass. Right? That, that's what uh, most people want to get to. So a single play, a pane of glass is a management console that presents data from multiple sources in a unified display. Right? So that is what uh, we are trying to do here and, and, and show you across the different domains. Right? So here, uh, I want to start with an application architecture. We are, uh, we are going to show you use cases. I'm going to do a code walkthrough um, with individual modules. And then we're going to spend the rest of the time building that use case yourself in your laptops. And I'll be here to answer questions and 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 you know take you along in a hands-on workshop. Right. So uh, the application architecture looks like this. I'm, I want to define that for you. Uh, we have uh, different com components in the base. That is Cisco DNS center, Cisco um, the uh, Catalyst um, SD WAN component that we, we, we manage, and then we have thousand eyes right in the base layer. On top of that, we have built modules. Modules correspond to alarms, network health, and application health, and and which is in turn speaks to a, a controller rest module. We, we will show how 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 these things work together. But before that, I just want to give a high high level overview of the architecture building blocks. Right? So alarms, network health, and app health. These are the three main modules which talk into a controller rest, uh, which is basically a, a partitioning like a mi microservice partitioning, where after which you have a rest calls, right? And 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 the DB push is a, so this yellow line or orange line is a bifurcation between the two components, right? And then you have DB push, which looks at pushing the collecting informations and then creating collections in MongoDB, using MongoDB in the cloud, collateralist. And then uh, from MongoDB, we are going to have charts exposed using Mongo charts. We, we will see how that works, right? We also have a parallel module of, for WebEx, which does notification and also a bot, which, which queries and, and, and gets data, right? So all of these are mentioned in this GitHub repository. So right, right now I would like to pause and ask everyone to go to this GitHub repository and git clone your um, um, uh, the repository into your local uh, environment. It could be laptop or desktop, you know? So just git, git clone it because we're going to talk about this repository going forward. In fact, uh, if you can open this in VS code, right, which, whichever ID that you are using, it will be good. And we can get started with that. Right? So I'll give you quickly two minutes to, or two or three minutes to clone this, and then um, we can get started. Yeah, thank you. So any questions, you can interrupt me. You, 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 you can stop me. You can unmute yourself and you can ask. correction you will not be able to talk to me 
but there's a questions panel where you can ask your questions so you can ask your questions on the questions panel uh, it's on on the right hand side you know in the meeting display right so i i will be looking and monitoring this area and taking any questions from you yeah. so right now the task is to go to the github repository as given here and download that um, source so let me open that for you one second So this is what um, the code repository looks like, right? So this is the GitHub repository. So you will be able to see this repository, and I would like you to clone this into your local, uh, local, local environment, and then we will get started. Right. Sure. Yeah. So um, let me share this. So this is the um, repository. And how, how 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 you clone it again? You can go to your favorite uh, ID and then um, just click open. And so basically, you can you know create a new repository from the ID itself. So here, if I go there and say new window, right? So it'll ask me what what I need to do, right? So here I can check git clone repository and then clone it, right? So yeah. So we, we will go 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 through a code walk through now. So yeah, so let me get started now. I hope all of you have to clone, to clone, uh, clone it correctly. So let me stop sharing this and go back to the presentation. Right. So yeah, so uh, what what you're saying is, we now have this, um, we, we now have everyone cloning the repository. So we're gonna start with the individual modules. Okay? So the first use case we're gonna discuss about is a single pane of glass, right? We're gonna show you a demo of the dashboard. We're gonna do a code walkthrough and then show which of the APIs were used and, and, and how, how to use them, right? So first let, let us look at the dashboard demo. So we'll be going through the same pattern across the different use cases. So the first one would be the modern single pane of glass dashboard, right? So uh, let me look at that. So if we, if we go to the, uh, right. So uh, how to take this is, you, you essentially go to the Git, GitHub directory Right, the the the, Git, the GitHub repository. If you go down, you will find in the read readme read section, you will find the link which goes to this particular dashboard. Right? You all can take it in your own laptop and and find out, you know, along with me. So this is the dashboard, and this dashboard is comprised of multiple components, three components in, in fact. You have alarms, you have network health, and you have application health, right? And then uh, within alarms. The, the first widget is essentially a summary or aggregation widget. And then you have two other widgets, which are also, you know, uh, summary widgets. So the, the first one is, so, so before describing them in detail, I like to say, you know, this is a single pane of glass because it aggregates multiple domains in, in, into one, 
SD WAN and the campus. So campus and SD WAN, it can aggregate into one particular dashboard. That's why it's called single pane of glass. And it can also show you alarms, network health, and application health in one one place without having to go to multiple places, right? So that's essentially what we mean by single pane of glass. And within alarms, as you can see here, you have different details. You have severity, you have summary, you have the name of the component. You have the URL, which will directly take you to the individual controller, you know, and 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 and, and see it. Right. Similarly, for network health, you have the similar components listed here, right? And and finally, for application health, so application health is a little more complicated. I will talk to you about that later. Um, we will see that in this corresponding time, where I, I I will explain to you each and every you know instance of it. So for now, I just want you to understand this is a single pane of glass, and this is a dashboard we're talking about. Now, how this that dashboard is built, right? That is what we are going to discuss now. So if you go to the uh, Visual Code, let, let me take the Visual Studio Code again. So bear, bear, bear with me as I keep shifting windows here. Right. So, so yeah. So single pane of glass, right, uh, is made up of different components, as we told earlier. Right? So uh, we can share the components again. Or, re, or I can recap the component to all of you right? for your memory. We have uh, these components that is essentially we are having the alarms, network health, and application health. Right. So we are now going to go through the code which has alarms, network health, and application health, and then talk about how we combine them together into one 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 page. So, to in order to get the network alarms, we have uh, the 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 first one is the the we manage alarms dot py file, right? If you if you can go to that in your repository, you will find that you have a file called we manage alarms dot py. It's gonna be small for you. I'll I'll make it bigger. Right. I'll close this one, and also on the the world world wrap. Right. Now it should be visible. So this alarm essentially will first import uh, vmanage underscore auth. So what does vmanage underscore auth do? Essentially, we are we are going to do all the authentication mechanisms through vmanage underscore auth. Okay. And what do you mean by authentication mechanisms? There's a specific way in order to establish authentication with vmanage before you can start, you know, um, getting information or or querying information from it. So the, the first method is, I mean, the first step is to have username and password and the IP. Right? So you need three items, username, password for access into the vManage and the IP. And with that, you, you can use it in an authenticate function right? where you essentially have a session which is requested. So you use request module in Python and then you, you have a, the exact step here where you, you give the URL slash J underscore security check. right, And then you have the username. These tags are very important because these, these are exactly the same you have to give, you know, in order to authenticate correctly. Right? Now, once you do the authentication using sessions.post, right, then you should get a 200 status code. If that is available, then you can go to the next step. You need to get a get a, to a token now. Right? So finally, you 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 call the request in order to get the token. And then you will get the token in the in the variable called token to, token underscore response, and then you take it into token. So essentially, you are going to return two two elements. One is session which you got earlier, and then second is token. Right? You need both of them. Now with both of them, what happens is when you do a query, there are multiple ways in which you can do a query. Right? You could you can do a query uh, with let's say um, uh, using session token. You do auth, you you do not, Authentication first, right? Now after that, the query can happen in multiple levels. One query is you can you you can do a query uh, with um, without any uh, parameters. In the sense, you 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 can do a query with only optional parameters. Or some sometimes you will need to do a query which requires certain parameters, right? So this function has been made for both purposes, right? So if there is a query which you are providing, then you use it. Otherwise, you don't use it. Right? So there are multiple ways to do it. You can have a look at this function and you know 
you will to understand those multiple ways are take, taken care by the same perform, same function itself right so this is a, a get request and from this you will get uh, the, the 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 response back okay. now we also have a, a a situation where you know we we have a um, a retry mechanism implemented we will get to that in a little while right so this is essentially the the uh, structure of the um, we 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 manage underscore auth we also have post data post data essentially means that we we will be um, wanting to send some information to the server in in the post request so some queries we can do using post as well so we will talk about that so anyway i i want by showing you this, we, I wanted to show the structure of the uh, the auth itself, you know, uh, for you to be familiar. And right, yeah. So I hope this is clear. Now uh, coming back to the function of alarms, we we are talking about alarms, right? So alarms, as you can see, this is the query where you have the field active type is boolean, a value is true, and operator is equal. Right? So we we mentioned these there, and then we fire a um, the API call to data service slash alarms endpoints, right? And then we use this query there in it. Right? The resulting da uh, the data set provides us with a, uh, a, a JSON variable. So I, I will show you exactly how this looks like, right? We, we, we're going to see that in a short, in a short, short while. So, so, all, uh, so all of you have got uh, um, one more file here called demo data, right? demo DB data. So you can go to the demo DB data within the repository to get access to this particular um, file. Here, what I've done is I've given the um, the responses which we manage would return to you, right? For the alarms, yeah. It's not so essentially. This is not we we manage returning directly. We are processing the alarms here. So as you can see here, uh, there is some um, pro processing being done here where we are taking the input. And we are uh, changing the uh, or or se the severity mechanisms, right? So here, let's say, um, you know, we are we are making sure the, the for example, my, my uh, the minor severity is been made as warning. Right? The reason we're doing this is because there's a single pane of glass, multiple domains are coming together, so we want to normalize the values, right? So again, this is the power of the APIs. You can take it and you can normalize the values according to your customer requirements and your business requirements. And then show it in your dashboard, right? So we are normalizing it, and then um, we are uh, ma making sure a new, you know, one second, sorry. yeah, we are ma making sure you are you are creating a new data structure or di or dictionary where, um, uh, yeah, the the whole structure is copied, you know, and then and and then put. Okay, so for th those of you who have not um, uh, cop uh, taken the GitHub file yet. There should be a um, uh, okay. I think uh, it was not share 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 shared with you. I will um, so just put in question. You you can ask a question saying that you are not able to um, clone the repository, and I I, I will share uh, give you some more time to clone it. Right. I'm supposing that all of you have cloned it right now. Thanks. So if you have any questions, you can ask, and I'll definitely uh, take you up on that. So now um, coming back to the code, right? right. So the vManage alarms, um, this is what v, uh, vManage alarms is doing. Essentially ta taking the alarm data from v vManage and then it is going to um, take only those alarms which are not acknowledged, that is, which is still active, right? And then we're going to make sure it is not normalized for the single pane of glass. That's what this is. Then, and after that, we go to the network health perspective, right? So three use cases are alarms, network health, and application health, right? So in the in the network health perspective, as you can see here, uh, we are getting net network health in in two methods, two stages. The first stage is an endpoint called data service device BFT sites and detail, right? So so in this, essentially, right? So there are um, Okay, so so before coming here, sorry, before coming here, I like to take you to mm, we manage right. Okay, fine. Yeah. So uh, so here we have three informations. One is site up, 
then you have um, side partial and then you have uh, side down right? there are three endpoints here so if we qu query the three endpoints as mentioned here one is side up that is the same endpoint bfd um, sides detail uh, but you give parameter as site equal to site up second one the endpoint is same but the parameter you're going to give is site partial and the third is site down so what this does is this will give you from three buckets that we manage has uh, of the site status some sites where bfd is fully up partially up and then fully down right so you you, you will get information from these areas and again what we're doing is we are we are taking it and then we are we are making sure you get the device family reachability health ip address so what what are the elements that you want to display in your dashboard right those elements are being fetched from the response and stored in the variable that's, that's what we're doing now if you want additional information or additional elements accordingly you have to structure the responses yeah and then we are using an um, uh, you're going to you're going to copy this into device data and you will see that we are returning the device data towards the end right so in, uh, you are going to return two things one is return data and second is device data right now yeah yeah so these two things are what we are we are returning at this point of time so this takes care of the net, net, network health parameter and then finally we come to the application health so in application health for we manage uh, it is very interesting so there is a, a module called nwpi network wide path insights and in nwpi you would be able to read the trace okay as as seen here and that trace itself will give you information about the flow in your network so net net flow information right so uh, the endpoints to 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 use here the api endpoints to use here are data service stream device nwi slash trace history this is to get the trace history from the devices and then you can actually use the nwpi endpoint itself which will stream the information continuous on a continuous basis right so um, the the code here is actually ta ta taking the trace and uh, you know it's actually running a query first for a particular trace id timestamp and if it's running state and then it's going to check certain sls like for example where the big drop has happened right big van drop has happened qos congestion has happened server no 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 response so there are certain custom sls we are trying to see which has been violated or not right and then as usual jitter latency lo local drop and there are many other parameters that you can check against right and if 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 they don't match then you can you know pull pull that information or or, or signal differently in your system saying that there is a critical alert for an application etc right? so so you can do some custom alerting as well based on this information right and then there is an event readout which will give you information about the event itself um, in fact in sd wan we have events which will be generated whenever there is a failure like like wan drop or something happens so we, we will see that in the demo as uh, uh, as things proceed so yeah so this is the um, structure so we are going to return sro data and trace details back from this particular function right now this information that is these three functions that we talked about or these three modules what they return right that are a simplification of that is mentioned here right? or, or a, a, a representation of that so we we manage health has uh, let's say health score of 0 right and then you have device family that is there are different devices and as as you can see each of the devices or or net, net network health consists of device family device health ip address name of the device reachability health and url and then and, and a uuid right this url will take you directly to the device which is showing the issue right it will take you exactly to the same device so so this pattern is what's returned by those particular modules right so i'll stop here now or uh, to take any questions from the uh, team here before proceeding uh, i hope you are able to follow along i'm just trying to explain the modules and show you the code we will do, do the integration now and you can so the assumption is you you are able to see this code in your own laptop and you will be able to integrate this you know 
in a similar MongoDB setup. It need not be MongoDB. It can be any any application. So so it can be any, any database that you have. If you have used Pro, uh, Postgres SQL, MySQL, or use any other SQL in the cloud, you know, or you have a local repository, you have a GraphQL. So which whichever DB you have, you are able to use the same data uh, in the DB right? because we have se separated the modules out. So the DB module is separate. The module that accepts information from the uh, infrastructure is separate. And then you have uh, authentication. So all these are separate modules. Right? So you can easily use the preferred module you want into your systems. So here, the example we are showing is through MongoDB. Right? Just want to make that clear. So we have a question here. Uh, yeah, it's okay. So the URL is not hard coded with the IP address. So this what, what we're showing the demo DB is the uh, result. So this is a, it's a demo of, of it's, a, it's a sample result coming from the endpoints. So whatever is returned by so uh, I will share the code again one more time. So whatever is returned by let's say um, the um, the alarms, right? So what was returned by the alarm? That is essentially the uh, the result here, return result. So this is essentially taking the alarms, showing a severity, right, uh, of the alarms. It's, it's basically what I was doing. Summary, event name, right, values. See, so this is what is returned by the alarms, and this is how the URL is being formatted, right? This is not hard coded. This is all dynamic in nature, right? So this result is what I'm showing as a demo data. The reason I'm doing that is because in this session, I know many of you may not have your own lab infrastructure to try this out. So hence, I'm giving you demo data, which will show you what the output would be. And you can indicate this in MongoDB and see the chart uh, coming in. Right. So with that expectation, I'm, I'm sharing the demo DB, you know, just for you to have a look at uh, the JSON files and, and the, the end result. Right. So yeah, so hope that is uh, that 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 has been answered. So any other questions you can ask, and I'll uh, ha happy to answer them. Yeah. So yeah, com coming back to the examples here. So now uh, we have this um, inf information ready. Again, I have done the same thing for DNS Center also. Again, uh, I I don't want to go into details of, the, of, of that. You can have a look in your own systems, right? And on in another session we can talk about DNS Center. So com coming back to here, um, the so let, let me take back the module which I was sh sh sharing one second. Right. So we talked about alarms, network health, application health, and then uh, now I'll talk about the other remaining half. That is controller rest, uh, the DB push, how the D, uh, DB instances are made. And then we'll go to MongoDB and then show you the charts. Right? And, and then after that, we'll, we'll talk about the WebEx and the notification based on, on, on that. Okay. So let me quickly do, do that. Stop sharing again. And share one more time. Right. Okay. So now we are going to controller rest. So in the controller rest, right, what's happening is, So the, the lab I had, right? So so this is basically just a Flask file. What it's doing is it's just making sure um, this is a separation of concerns, right? So we are separating the database uh, uh, information or database module from the network module. So network module is going to go to network network devices, get the information we require, and this controller rest is going to um, merge them or, or 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 combine them, and then give it at an endpoint called slash data. Right? So if we give, if we go to the IP address port uh, four fives, and then you put slash data, you would get this information out. And exactly this is how I populated the DB demo data. And this is essentially the input, the output that I got. As you can see, data equal to it. The output that I got when this was called, when the controller dot uh, Controller rest.py was executed and, and 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 I made a call on on the application, right? 
now uh, so yeah so i'll do a code walk through so towards the end we will uh, so the, the lab i have is uh, i have to vpn into a machine to access the lab so what we'll do is we will do that towards the end you know the the complete demo end to end demo right so i want to show you this uh, first time the code walk through right so yeah so so we have imported all the modules here right and then we are actually calling them uh, the you're getting the data and then we are putting them into dictionary and then we are presenting it out here. Right? That's what we're doing. Here. And then the controller dot rest will be invoked by. So who will read it? So our, our DB module, right? As it were, DB push. It is going to read the controller dot rest API. So as you see here, a call has been gone into the controller dot rest right? endpoint, and you get the data into the re response field. Right? So now the whole uh, process starts mm -hmm. of how you get those data and populate into MongoDB. For for uh, make, making it into a single pane of glass now because we have got it from different places now we are combining them together. Right. So here uh, we we have a module called DB notification. We'll talk talk about this later uh, after this. But well, this is about WebEx and and how we do notification there, etc. So first we'll talk about the main DB module. Right. So we are having the uh, we manage data um, again TNS center data. And, and, and different modules, as we discussed right now, there's health data, the network health. Uh, this is a application data, right? And then you have, um, again, uh, the, the health uh, application from DNS Center. Th Thousand Eyes has an application health data. And all these data together. Uh, and, and, and then further on, we, we look at, so there are some views where you have to combine and check. Like, for example, network health. So because single pane of glass, we want to be able to um, show you whether the network is down or partially down. Right? If an SD1 component is down or if the canvas component is down because two domains we're combining here. So this is what you're seeing here. So what you're saying is if, um, yeah, this one, right? So we are, we are actually mul multiplying the health score, com to total health score from uh, we manage with DNS center and then get, get getting a score. Now, if the score is zero, that is, um, there was some issue with either one of the critical issue with either one of the uh, domains, then we show the network health is in critical condition. Otherwise, there was partially down. If either one of them are partially down, we show network is partially down. And if all of them are positive, we show so this sounds like a simple use case, but a lot, lot of people um, are experiencing the issue like multiple domains, how, how do you find out, you know, what is the least common denominator you know, of, of issues, right? So this is what it is. And then you have, um, you have alarms also here. And finally, what you do, you basically open a collection in the MongoDB and then you, 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 you delete the collection first because uh, this is a dashboard which contains the real time information or the latest information, right? So we are purging the old ones, and then we are making sure we 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 add the new, the new information. The adding the data is a MongoDB function. Again, MongoDB has a auth module which I've created. You can, you can have a look at that. Right? There are multiple ways to authenticate into MongoDB. You can do your, your URL parse in case your password is having at the rate you know some signs which are not by default escapable. Then it's is say safer to use this one. To escape your password, right? And then, yeah, and and all, always store your credentials in a separate credential file. Again, this is the uh, minimum security requirement, but this is still not enough for protection. For protection, I would highly recommend you use HashiCorp Vault or or Cisco Panoptica or other solutions. You know, before you you push your credentials um, uh, out in the, in the production environment, right? So yeah, so so essentially, you are using um, the credentials. Uh, dot mongodb uri and then you are going to call the mongodb to delete it to add the information extra right this is what it is and you are also having a ping here you know just to check whether mongodb being successful or not now come com coming back to the db push um, that we're talking about right so we have um, opened up different collections network health is one collection uh, dna center alarm is one collection uh, right device health Application health, right? Then you have alarms. So you have around four collections we have created, and then all of them are shown here, you know, 
as documented now coming uh, to the next step so yeah so any questions so far so we just discussed the db module um, any questions from the from the uh, participants all good okay okay yeah so if there are any questions you can ask in the question section right so uh, you really can't talk here but you you can always ask and i will be happy to answer that yeah. thank you so so coming back here the the db push essentially takes care of pushing it into the into the db so you have to invoke this so uh, if you want to push this let's say every one hour right or or every 5 minutes or every 15 minutes or every one minute right then you have to keep calling this module which will tr trigger the activities as mentioned right right we also have a um, a dry db push which essentially just to check whether the systems are working without actually pushing it into the db right so this is again just for testing purposes you can have a have a look at it now we come to the db not, not, uh, notification method okay so notification is very interesting okay so so before we show you no notification let me go back to the the dashboard share the screen for the, for the dashboard itself uh, give me a moment right so see uh, as you can see the dashboard has a lot of information like you have uh, the the planes on top and then you have different uh, details below right there are a lot of entries there are i know how much 30, 31 entries 31 critical and six major so around 37 37 30 39 40 right around 40 total entries are there here and here also there are a lot of entries here right? so so there are a lot lot of entries uh, in in these places and and in a big network as you can see there could be hundreds of them you know more so it is uh, not reasonable to expect someone to always look at this dashboard you know and this will auto refresh obviously but then still looking at the dashboard to see when some something has changed some new new item has come or not you know so getting that uh, changes or observing the changes is difficult when you are actually looking at the dashboard only so a use case was there to uh, a better way is to actually go to the uh, webex information right so I'll, i'll i'll just take that for you in a minute right where um, just give me give me a second yeah yeah where we can actually go go to webex and then show you the um, changes that is happening over time so let me let me share my webex screen now Uh, to show what I'm talking about, right? So as you can see here, right? Uh, yeah, as you can see here, right? We have the alarms. So so whenever the uh, the TP push happens, this notification sent to Webex, which will actually tell you the alarm ID, and then the alarm summary. What has changed? Something got so thirty eight alarms got added. Something got removed, and what is the total one? So basically, changed, added, removed. or still remains the same or not right and then find the total so all these states are shown here for each of the dashboard or widgets so whether it is a network health or device health or application health right these things are shown here now this becomes important and powerful when you see some ch changes has happened in a network so i can i can take a previous history where change, changes happened So, so I can get a full history of changes, you know, because every time database is populated or touched, a no notification is sent. So I always maintain a, a history of changes that has happened in in my dashboard. So as a network engineer or or, or, or admin team, I can just look look over here and see whether something has changed, you know, something new has been added or not. Otherwise, I don't have to really be bothered about it you know, if there's nothing added. Okay. So over here. you see something called the ids right this is very important so what this enables you to do is there's a bot here um, there's a there's an sd wan bot which i created or or the uh, dashboard bot is there so in this bot we can actually communicate to the bot and tell uh, no, give an id right and and then the details of the alarm or what has changed will actually come here so if you see, if you go down you will see uh, yeah you 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 will see something like this right so we actually have um the sd wan bot called 
asking for de details on this particular ID. Okay, and that particular ID will be associated with a particular um, um, application. In this case, application health. Right, this particular ID corresponds to application health for a particular time time period. Right. So when a, a system administrator sees or our net, net network operator or engineer sees, you know, the application health has changed and they want to get details of what has changed in this particular time frame, right? They can go to the bot and give this ID. And what happens is when you give the ID, immediately the information comes, right? What got added? What are the events that got added? It'd be saying that zero changed, seven got added, right? That means that there are seven events that got added. And what are the events? So all those events come here. So without going to the dashboard, because in dashboard you won't you won't get that information. What got added? What got removed? Right. So this is a very good use case where you have uh, these populated and bots are used to to give you more information. You know regarding certain things. Right. So yeah. So so this I just want to highlight uh, highlight this out. Now we, we we will look at the code of how it was done. So if you have questions, I know I might be going a little fast here, uh, but if you have any questions you can ask, I will be happy to stop by and explain a little more. Right. So coming to the DB no notifications, as you can see here, uh, we, we got the information from the, from we, we, uh, we, we manage DNS center. So all the information is there, alarms are there, right? So uh, this is the code which goes in and, and you know, uh, goes to the database in MongoDB, finds out what was changed, right? And then uh, the, there's a lot, uh, like a lot of loop and, and logic applied here to find out uh, exactly. You, they will match the rows and check, you know, whether the same or not, right? And then it'll add to a, a dictionary and a list uh, to make sure uh, those changes are tracked accordingly, right? So, so you, you 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 can go ahead and have a look, and it should be very clear, you know, what this is doing. So this is do, 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 doing it across all the different widgets, and then it is um, writing it back into the um, database, right? Saying that what has changed along with the IDs, because when you call the IDs, you want to get that back, that information back, right? And then the uh, the bot itself is implemented using um, the the WebEx bot. So you have the code here, which which go, goes in details on how to create a web Webex bot and use it for no, no notification for day two, right? For SD WAN and for other situations. Okay. Now coming back to the uh, use case on SD WAN, right? Yeah. So um, yeah. So has uh, everyone cloned the directories? Um, uh, I mean, has has you cloned the repository? I will share the repository one more time for you all to cl clone it. Because now uh, we are going to proceed where I'm going to show you the Mo MongoDB and and how to access MongoDB and, you know, pop populate them there. Right. So before we get that, we want everyone to have taken the um, Git, GitHub repository. Right. So do a Git clone. So how to do a Git clone? Like I can give you a small re re recap on that. Just go to a terminal. Right. Uh, let me open a terminal for you. Right, do a git clone, and then you have to give the ID here. And the ID would be uh, this one, right? Then when you press enter, it will clone into this. Currently, I don't want to clone it because I already cloned this. When you press enter, you should be able to clone this completely into your system, right? So let me know if, if everyone has done it. So can you just put in the questions if if you have done it? Just say you have done it, you know. And if you have any questions, you can ask. And I want to know how how many of you are with me, you know, while I'm going to go go through the uh, MongoDB chart uh, details, right? And and how how to populate it, etc. So can you just uh, put in the questions because I'm not able to see the audience and we'll not be speaking to each other. So can you just put in the questions, you know, uh, about whether you have cloned it or not, and if you have any questions further before we proceed. I'll give you a minute um, to, do, to clone it in case you have not.
so okay so yes i'm just waiting for people to you know put in the questions even if you have completed this just let, let me know just, just put it there in the questions you know because that's the only way we can communicate just put there in the questions that you have completed so i will get to know you know that you have done it so far i don't want to be going far ahead when you have not you know uh, been able to do it so far right um okay so i think we will proceed because i think uh, most of you should have been able to clone it by by now right so we're going to go to the mongodb instance I'm going to show you. I'm going to sign in. The cloud instance is MongoDB, which you can use. And in this example, we have populated that, you know, for for doing it. And I just want to show you the the tables populated in MongoDB, and then how how to use the char charts in the backend. Right. So when you come here, uh, you can browse collections. So whatever um, you know, the DB push has done, it will be stored here. Right. So the test DB, this is where we store the alarms. Right. As you can see here, the alarms are populated here. Right. You can see the um, the we manage alarms here as well. The net the network health, right? It's operated, and then you will have device health. So all the device health are com a co combination of both the uh, the controllers. And now we come to the charts. So in the charts, what happens is it's a very low code approach. You can take the charts and you can just uh, ensure you know you 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 can uh, as you see here this is the dashboard you created. You can edit it, and you can just take the uh, dictionary here and map map it to the corresponding category so in this case i'm i'm using a, a, do, a donut chart you could use any other charts as well and then we do a label and you do a count right so this is what you do right. again um, if you have any questions on this you can always ask me uh, either uh, if you're doing along with me you can ask me in the in the question section here or even after this the deck will have my email you can reach out to me, you know, in case you want to know how we did the dashboard. We can explain that in, in further detail to you, right? So these are the components. You you put it here, and then you do an arc. So this is basically the charting mechanism, how we do it. So because the, the value is already there in MongoDB, it's very easy to do the charts here. You don't need to call any additional APIs to, to make sure the chart is populated. Right? So yeah, so I just wanted to show you this, you know, before we, we, we proceed. And this will be a table form, and this is this is a donut chart, right? So two different re representation of, of the data itself. Okay. So yeah, uh, yeah. So now, uh, while we wait, I'm going to um, uh, stop sharing for a minute. I'm going to wait for questions. Okay, there's some couple of questions we got here. Okay, yeah, thanks. So uh, two people have responded. Uh, they have, they have, uh, so there's a, there's a question here. Uh, the chart creation process, right? One more time. Okay, sure, definitely. So let me come back to the presentation. The chart creation process. I will explain that one more time. So what you need to do is you need to uh, come to the chart section. So first, you have to populate the, the 
the database okay so to ensure that the database is correctly populated okay by browsing the collections you will be able to browse your own database right and check whether so in in, in my case test db is the one uh, which i'm using over here right uh, and this is store store db there are two databases here right and and as you can see here in store db there is only one one thing called store in test db there are other things like there are a uh, lot of collections right in this let's look at one thing called alarms right so there's alarms here so so now ensure that whatever you wanted to push here so in this case uh, the the db push or let's see the mongodb auth right? this one so here the db name is main db right but then uh, when i worked it it was i i have put it test db right so whichever name you put here essentially whichever db you create it will be the db that's listed here right so in your case it could be main, uh, main db which will have the information right so you click on that and then go go to the exact um, collection check check over here you know which collection it is you can go to the db push and see which collection you are using right let's say net, network health or device health then come back here and and look for device health and then just ensure that what is here is what you're expecting right from your side and once it is correct uh, it, it, it should be the same just like the first time checking then come back to the charts and in the charts uh, in our case uh, yeah there will be an option to create a dashboard so you can always add a dashboard over here so i can show an example you know by creating a new dashboard right? sample dashboard I save here. One dashboard will be created, right? And it'll, initially, it will be a blank dashboard. So you can create, an, uh, you can add a chart, right? And when you add a chart, um, again, within your cluster, you click on this. As I told you, we have two two databases. You use which, whichever ones you are using. It could be main DB. It could be something else, right? And then in this case, example, we are looking at device health. Okay, so select that. And now, on this side, you will get information on device health. Now, this is a suggested charts on how you can use it. But in my case, uh, let's say you want to use a, a a donut shape, right? So you can go to donut. Uh, there's something called do donut here, and then you have to give two information: label and arc. Okay, so label essentially means what is going to be on the chart itself so maybe you want to show uh, how many devices are healthy right so if how many is a question means maybe id is the thing you want to show or let's say the name of the devices you can put as label right? you, can, you can see here an arc uh, let, let's say the arc is going to be the id right you can try it out and find out what happens right when you, when you do, do do this the uh, a, a circle is created and you will find the different names coming here right and count one so is this what you wanted to represent or maybe this is not what you want to represent you want to represent something else right so in that case you can you can flip flip it around and see name in the arc and id you can give in the label right so you you, you, you can try so in this case what happens is uh, the the opposite though to the, the so you get it right so the la label is the one that is going to show you the 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 name of the information and then the arc is what is going to show the, the value of it. Right? Basically, like a dictionary. Right? Now, once you do it, you will be able to find out what you want to do in this. Um, you can also use table. So, in the charts that we have created, we have two charts. One is donut and one is um, tables. Right? So, in the device health, that is this one, we have used tables to represent it. So, in this case, uh, an appropriate one that we have used is called tables. So you come here and look for table and in the table there are multiple things you have to look right you can look at device family can be one value oh, sorry so group so let's say um, you want to give name as one of the groups so when you put it here you will find what's happening over here right um, you want device family so the, the, the groups will be the labels that that the, the columns you're creating in the uh, table 
so and and things like that so while doing it you can find it out uh, how to do it is very easy and then you go to filter you can filter things you can customize it i use a lot of conditional formatting you can do it like different colors you can put it you know and 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 things like that right if you don't want colon portals so you will try it out. I think this is a low code approach very easy to do it you can have, have a look at it and you know you should be able to figure it out figure out most of the stuff to do you can even override the labels and and and, and do it separately right? so i hope it was clear uh, any questions i i hope it was clear if you have any further questions you can ask again yeah. thank you so yeah so co coming back for the de for the demo bot um i'm going to close this um, chart thing here i'm going to keep this open i'm going to keep this side open and i'm going to connect to vpn in order to activate the the um, the test bed right to show you in in live uh, what's happening right? uh, any question you can ask me uh, as well again uh, this there is uh, 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 like always i'm happy to take questions so you can ask me again uh, meanwhile, I'll just um, take a moment to connect the, to the VPN. Right. Thank you. Now, for the while I do this, while I set up, uh, get the lab up and running for for showing you a live demo of this uh, in a, in action, uh, I would like to uh, tell you, you know, once you've clone, cloned the repository, you have the uh, uh, the demo DB. Um, you know, file already with you. So I would request you to start modifying the DB push and ensure the demo DB is used instead of the, the actual data and then try to push it into MongoDB and see. If you don't have MongoDB, now's the time, you know, you can go and uh, enroll for it in the, in the Atlas and then uh, see. I'll I'll be connecting to v, uh, VPN on the meantime, in the meantime. Give me some time. Yeah, so I'm still here. I'm just trying to connect to the VPN for the lab. That's why you know we have a pause here. Uh, but in the mean mean meantime, I think you can go ahead and try to uh, run the MongoDB, the db.push file. Um, you you've seen the code walkthrough. You can modify it accordingly, and 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 check it out. You know. So meanwhile, I'll just connect to the VPN to to show you the lab. Okay, there seem to be some issue with the VPN connection. <clears throat> it's okay. So I'll what I'll do is I can record the video for the uh, for 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 the actual lab happening, right? Uh, and then I will share it in the same GitHub directory. So you can have a look when all the, all these files are getting executed as well, <clears throat> right? Um, so any questions from the uh, from, from 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 the participants so far uh, regarding the code walkthroughs? Because <clears throat> when you go go through the code and try to do a code walkthrough or or, or integrated into your platforms you might encounter some questions <clears throat> if if you can foresee them now you can ask me anything related to your environment how to make the change how to make the changes or um, any other uh, let's say day two use cases that you are thinking about and you want to be you want to see implemented right uh, let me know here so i can also um, 
keep that in mind and then uh, uh, help you achieve it right so in the question section you can uh, put in your thoughts you can put in um, you know any use cases you have in mind in the day to scenario so so i'll just go through my presentation back to i have not completed that yet so let me just go there right so <clears throat> yeah so we, we did a code walk through and i showed you, you know different components how it works so cross launch as i told you uh, we saw the url which was being created in different modules the, it's a different way to create the url it's not the same way you can read the code you'll understand it's a different way to create the url in each of the instance the alerting uh, the same thing i told you about the custom notifications we did in, Web, in webex and how the changes and details are implemented as well right application health yeah so this is something that we didn't talk yet so i i, I will talk about it right, right now right so so let me just go back to the the um, windows here uh, or or the right so we had briefly touched about application health when we talked about nwpi in v manage right so coming back to the the screen here the application health here is shown as 10 critical applications and as you can see here there are multiple uh, things shown here google services uh, ocsp thousand eyes agent google play ssl binary or http so there are multiple things here and you see here something called trace id right? so here uh, first of all this data is a combination of uh, net flow analysis done by dna center as well as thousand eyes as well as the um, catalyst sd van we manage uh, controller right so here trace id is from the nwpi module which we saw earlier which would generate uh, the live net flow information flowing through the van it's taking in the um, controller we manage is detecting that there's a flow asymmetry that has happened based on the net flow information it has received it has done analysis and, and found out that there's a flow asymmetry happening and that is what is being shown here as an issue right similarly we have calculated the jitter and jitter has exceeded the limit that we have personally set so this is a custom slo which we have set and we saw the comparison happening in the module where we compare a lot of values and here jitter is on a higher side and we are showing it here and this is through api this is, this is not present in the uh, we manage by default this is something we we uh, looked at the jitter and then we flagged it as concern you know again this, this, this will be present in the flow asymmetry and van, and van drop event as well which we manage creates but then as a customer or as a partner if you want to show your custom slos or highlight your custom slos right, you can use this approach of figuring out um, certain things which are you know you want to highlight more for example right so here uh, both these the van drop and the uh, um, jitter is coming from the same trace id so essentially it means that the we manage had detected that you know the jitter is high and probably because of that it flagged the van drop happening right um, but yeah uh, you you wanted to highlight it one more time right that, that's why we, we have the custom metrics mentioned here right? so so this is what we do and then uh, this is completely uh, ba based on the um, nwpi module in vv manage uh, you can have and to activate that there are multiple methods you have to go to you have to activate telemetry streaming and then there are multiple configurations which you can find in configuration guides you know how to activate uh, nwpi right so once it's activated and everything then you can use the apis to make the calls and get the information to flow into you right so yeah i have a question in the audience here uh, yeah uh, check uh, which file do you check for the name of the DB? So, uh, name of the DB. So, okay. Um, so, um, okay. Name of the DB can be anything. So, it depends on uh, the the file itself. So, if in the DB push, DB push or py, right? What uh, name is being given in the DB push or py? Or not, not DB push, sorry. Uh, what name has been given in the MongoDB underscore auth? Right, the authenticate DB that is being called by a module, right? So assume you are not giving any values inside authenticate DB, right? Under mongodb.auth, let me share the code so that it will be more clear to you. 
end screen. Let me share the code currently. Yeah. Inside the authenticate DB, right? You have DB name equal to main DB, right? So in this, what name you have given here? If it's main DB, then the expectation is that this is the name of the DB that's supposed to be there in the MongoDB also. Now, if this was test DB here, then in MongoDB also you should have a test DB as a database name. Right? Now, database names are um, something that has to be predefined in MongoDB before you invoke the Python code. Because collections is something that you can dynamically create in the Python module. But DB is not. DB is something that has to be present in the MongoDB. So you have to physically create a DB. You have to go there to MongoDB and create a database. Right? And that database name can be anything. But whatever it is there, that name should be mirrored into this to make sure you know you are accessing the same DB. Right? Now, after that, the collections that is used, that is if you go to db.push, the, 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 these are called collections. If you see here, right? It's called, this is collection. Collection names can be defined by the Python code itself. So you don't have to worry about these names. This is something that the code will take care. But the DB name, that is when you call authenticate DB without a parameter, you are expecting the default parameter to kick in. The default parameter in this case is the, sorry, in this case is, uh, uh, where is it? Yeah. The default parameter is main DB. Now I have called this with another parameter in let's say uh, no notifications, right? In this case, in no, no, no in notifications, I'm calling the same authenticate DB with a different name, store DB. So for notifications, they need to be store DB present in the MongoDB. And for the normal push activities, there need to be um, back to this yeah they need to be main db present so according to this file structure now if your file is different if your db is different you can uh, mirror these names accordingly right. i hope that was clear uh, so can you repeat the questions uh, akash um, you are asking how to further analysis the alerts Let's say I want to see further details around applications in MongoDB. How to do further analysis on the alerts? So what uh, alerts you're talking about? Let's say you want to further details. So what kind of details you're looking for uh, around the MongoDB? So for application health, uh, in general, we get information from the NetFlow modules, right? So then net, 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 NetFlow will give you five tuples generally, and then uh, statistics like jitter, packet loss, etc. Right? Um, now this is. From DNS Center as a controller, there is Assurance module, which will give you an application 360 view of the applications. So from there, you get application information. Right? You can look through the reference document over there to find out how it is done. In the code where we have implemented it, you can have a look at our code as well. For vManage, we are using NWPI as the module uh, to actually, the, the API also, to actually find the uh, NetFlow live the NetFlow information and, and, and get those information back and and it has a lot of it has a rich set of uh, returns so you can go to the code on the nwpi code so let me share that screen to you one second um let me share it so if you go to nwpi this is to create the trace so, so by default vmanage does not create an nwpi trace this is very important people i forgot to mention this by default the trace is not created so you have to manually trigger the trace Maximum duration of the trace is 60 minutes. So after every 60 minutes, it will stop, even if you create it. So we have a code here, which was which is hard coding the site VLAN ID because there's a limitation that for NWPI, one site cannot, you know, more than two VLAN IDs per site is not allowed to have a NWPI trace started. So hence, it doesn't make sense to figure out all the v, v, uh, VLANs and then, you know, pump all traffic across all sites. So we have to be ju judicious here because there's a limitation. So you have to go and figure out which VLANs and which sites are the ones you are most concerned about. So in, in VLAN 100 or site 100, I want to only look at VLAN 10. In site 121, I want to look at only VLAN um, 10. Right? And, and, and they are both, um, you know, the ones I'm looking at. So, so what this happens is from 100, 110 source, uh, a stream will go to 121.10, right? 
right? And 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 reverse also. So essentially, uh, uh, two 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 streams are started here, right? Hundred ten and one one twenty and ten, right? The the two two streams are start, start, started here. Now, the thing is, um, yeah. So so essentially, uh, you you have to define it in, uh, in this manner, and uh, you 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 can look at trace history to find out the traces run, running, but most importantly. Uh, go back to the read information. So, so this this module was for activating the NWPI. It will keep checking every five minutes to see whether trace exists or not. Otherwise, it will start a new trace. Right? And again, it will it has all timers, you know, to ensure that um, um, it gives proper amount of time to recheck whether the traces is running extra. Now, the the important thing is the read trace. The read trace one has a lot of information because, uh, frankly, the um, NWPI is a, this is a streaming API, so this actually has a lot of information that is streamed to you, you know, from 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 the API itself. So, so see here, there's a lot of information you get, and uh, that information has been distilled down, and only the ones that we want, or at least what I've chosen to keep, I've kept. And if this maybe this is what you're asking for, then you can go here and and find the return value of this. You can you can do a print on data and see, and then you can you know. Uh, check which values you want to keep, etc. Right? You will get more details around the uh, different applications from vManage perspective. Now you get different details from different perspective. You can get from the thousand eyes separately, etc. You know, you have different vantage points to see the application flows. Right? So the details you get also will be, will be different accordingly. So any other questions, team? Anything else you want to ask? I hope the session has been informative for all of you, um, and uh, you know I hope that you will download the uh, uh, or clone the repository and use it. Right? We will add more doc more documentation there. Uh, we'll add we videos that show how the code is running, right? And and, the, and then we will definitely want to expand the use cases, right? So in fact, I will want to um, share one more thing. Share this one. Right? So when you go go to this dashboard. You will find the form here. Uh, please fill the form, or even you can contact me directly. Uh, my email will be provided in multiple places. Uh, we want to get use cases that you you want to see happening, right? Just share with us, and we will try our best to create them. Um, you know, and 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 you know, make sure if 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 it's applicable to a lot of people, then definitely we will like to simplify your your you know uh, things for you, and and definitely um, pro provide it um, uh, in in some form or fashion. Right, so please share your use cases, uh, share your concerns, any questions you have, please uh, keep sharing. So hope, ho hoping that you can you learn something new from the day two automation journey for SD WAN, and um, I hope you know you can do do this on your own. You can onboard this on your platform and um, make you use you use of it. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I have any any more questions? Okay. There is a. Uh, is there any other questions here? One second. Uh, from none. Okay, I think Lalit, we 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 will uh, take this offline. Like after the workshop, we can. Try, I'll definitely help you tr troubleshoot this. Yeah, uh, we will get get to the bottom of the error you're seeing. Yeah, thank you. So there is a poll that has popped up. So I hope um, uh, uh, requesting all of you to rate the session so that we can um, uh, get your input and find out how to make it more relevant for you, right? And um, yeah, thank you. So see you all in the next sessions. I think the the we'll have upcoming sessions in the weeks. If you you have re re registered for it, you can find the sessions in your invites, right? So encouraging all of you to um, to attend our further webinars in, in the direction. Right? There's a question again to somebody. Yeah, yeah. So I'll I will add a requirements or text to the GitHub repository as well. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do a freeze and do it. Yeah. Thank you. So um, any other questions?
I'm sure I have, yeah. Uh, let me know the questions you have. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, the main link that you will need to use is the GitHub link, which I have shared. I will also share the P P PPT with you after this session. In that, we will have all the links also listed, you know, for this. And you must have seen the uh, re registration for the next sessions. We have a session next week as well. We have two of them. So uh, be sure to attend them. So they'll be covering about... Um, um, uh, an interesting tool set, DevOps, you use cases, etc. So it'll be very interesting to have a look at it and that also for next week. Thank, thank you everyone. So hoping to see you again soon.